Okay, so uh, this is part three. I'm sorry that the uh, process of doing all this has taken so long, but uh, it was a necessary thing. So let's get this uh, off here. We'll take this panel off. This panel has to be pulled off. It just has a single screw. And what we have to do here is we'll just take these four screws out and that will give me access to the real table motor assembly and then uh, we'll start doing a service on it and, and getting this thing um, good to go from the bottom end and then we'll do the top end and the only thing left we have to do at the top end is do um, cleaning but the bottom end we're gonna do some lubrication um, we'll put some uh, we'll just do some really good general cleaning so let's get started okay so the first thing to do after we get this thing up and out of the way is we need to start taking the real table motor assembly apart we're going to do that lubricate it and we're going to replace all four of the electrolytic capacitors on this board as well i like to say that word electrolytic i don't know why just satisfying to me Now we pull the washers off, pull the, uh, we're just basically taking it apart so that we can do a thorough uh, lubrication. I'm going to pull the band, this is the brake, it's, uh, it's just a little braking system and it slows down the, uh, speed of the reel. Just gonna pull that up. Let's get the I'm gonna pull this up out of the way. I'm gonna pull this one out of the way. Just pull this straight up here. Okay. Now what we'll do now is we'll need to uh, clean these posts we'll clean them and then uh, we'll put a little bit of oil on each one we're just gonna do one little dab of oil on each one that will give it uh, lubrication that it needs we're also gonna pull the motor off here So what we'll do is we'll clean the coils, we'll clean those, we'll put just a little bit of oil drop right down inside there, just a little bit of oil down in there. And basically this will help the, this will lubricate the reels, uh, it'll lubricate the actual motor that, uh, or the uh, not the motor but the pitment arm the arm that swings back and forth because you put a little bit of lubricant in there and that's going to help we're actually uh we're not going to put it on the, in there we're actually going to put it on to the post so we're just going to put a little bit on that post and that will help lubricate the uh well actually yeah the motor itself it'll lubricate the motor and this thing will spin freely it's all about cleaning the old lube off and re-lubing everything getting all the moving parts you know freed up clean and then you know re-lubing it really does improve the function of the machine It'll actually make this thing perform 
the same way it did when it was brand new. Um, it'll, you know, work just like it did, used to do. So, and then when we replace all four of those electrolytic capacitors, and that should help extremely well. Uh, that should be fine. Now these are 16 at 47s. So let's get a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and I'll show you what to do. Um, so I've got the lubrication or the uh, rubbing alcohol. I've got the Q-tip soaked with alcohol and that's going to help get any of the dried lubricant off any of the old oil and we'll do both sides here I'm going to also clean the felt pads as well that's just really going to help with the lubrication I'm just going to clean the coils. This is the Hall, Hall Effect device, which is the actual motor. And I'm just going to kind of clean these coils. I'm going to clean the felt pad. Alright, I can see there's some dirt on there already. Now, once we get that all done, I'm going to clean the felt pad on this one as well. I think you can see the, that the dirt is coming off quite quite nicely. And uh, so we now got that done. And the next thing we need to do is clean this as well. So we'll need to go ahead and, and clean this and I'm just going to put a little bit more alcohol on it and then I'm going to clean the oil there's still some alcohol on it so we'll just I don't have any contact cleaner so I'm going to have to use alcohol to uh, clean There we go, we're cleaning that. We'll clean the uh, solenoid switch. Um, other models actually have two or three solenoids. This particular one only has one solenoid activating. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that with some alcohol. I'm just going to pour, put a little bit of uh, alcohol onto the onto the switch we'll go back and forth and that's gonna help clean I wish I had some contact cleaner but I'm out okay so that should be fine we're gonna put a little bit of cleaner right here on the this is the sensor detects the rotation of the reel detects the uh, detect this is uh, detecting if the take-up reel is turning because when when it senses that the take-up reel is not turning in play mode, if it's playing and it's not turning, it'll automatically shut the machine down. This sensor tells the machine there's no, uh, that there's no movement on the reel, so it shuts it down to keep it from eating tape. It's to keep the machine from spitting out tape. You know, if it's got something wrong with it and it's eating tapes, you know, before it 
shoots a bunch of tape out, you know what I mean? So, so now what we can do is uh, put a little bit of oil, 3-in-1 oil on the post. And I'm going to put a little bit of 3-in-1 oil onto a Q-tip and then we'll do that. But we also need to take this apart as well. I went ahead and cleaned this and you can see that there's specks of dirt on the on the thing so it's all nice and clean now I can uh, put the um, we can clean the other part here I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a little bit of alcohol on there and let it dry by air or we'll just kind of help it dry by Q-tip. Okay. All right. There we go. So now we can simply put a little bit of oil on that shaft and then we'll put that back on and we'll put a little bit of oil on each one of those so i'm going to get q-tip soaked in the three in one oil i got a little oil on the uh, shaft here And we'll make sure that's spinning nice and free, which it is. Now we'll take the Q-tip soaked in alcohol. I mean oil, I mean, not alcohol, but oil. Put a little oil there, and we'll put a little oil on the gear. Just a little bit. We'll put a little oil on the spindles here. don't want to put a lot of oil just a little bit putting some oil on the shafts here will help with lubricating and it really will do a good job this thing will work very very well now we've also got this put back together so now we can put this back on That's back on. Now we should be able to start dropping in our, putting our spindles back on, our reels. Compress that. We'll just do that so that the, and we'll make sure this spins. Make sure it spins freely. Okay, we got it all clean. We're going to simply just reinsert it. And there was quite a bit of dirt that uh, came off of that Q-tip. And let me show you the dirt that just came off of there. Look at all that dirt. That came right off the capstan. Next thing we're going to do is once we get done with the bottom side here, we'll go to the uh, top side and do a cleaning. But I think what I want to do is replace these capacitors 
and uh, let's just see if any of them because sometimes these fail when these fail it can have issues with fast forwarding or rewinding um, sometimes it can even stop the machine from playing a lot of times when it will not play for more than about a second or two seconds your issue you automatically think that it's going to be the hall effect device yes that could be the reasoning but always check these caps first if you replace these caps and you're still having that issue then i would suggest try replacing the hall effect device okay so let's uh, go ahead and replace these caps alright so let's get these new caps soldered in and uh, once we get those soldered in and uh, whoops this one's and the leaves kind of messed it up there we go let's put the lead over there there we go Okay, let's get these things soldered in, and, uh, so here are the old capacitors. They're being replaced with brand spanking new ones. Alright, so we got them all soldered in, as you can see. Okay, so, before we, uh, put the bottom piece back on, I just want to make sure that everything is working good from the bottom side when taking things apart and putting them together sometimes you'll have issues you know that you might have to correct you just never know There we go. Okay, so, uh, okay, still working pretty good. Uh, let's do rewind. We might need to replace that Hall Effect device. Well, we still gotta clean the, the top side too, so, probably, probably stick into the drum. Yeah, I think that's just tape sticking. So I'm going to clean the top side and then uh, we'll see how it performs. But uh, I'm actually starting to think that maybe the Hall Effect device needs to be changed because when you go to uh, rewind and fast forward it just seems to be a little slow and uh, but that's probably due to the sticking of the of the drum now we can clean the drum and if it's still sticking to the drum probably gonna have to take the uh, top half of the drum off just to clean it and then put it back on but I'm hoping that I won't have to go that far. So I got everything uh, cleaned on this thing and it looks like the Hall Effect device has failed on this thing. So the uh, problems with the rewinding and the fast forwarding uh, wasn't uh, the caps, it was the Hall Effect device. And, you know, so, so a lot of times it's the caps, and sometimes it's the Hall Effect device. And I actually do have another Hall Effect device that we're going to install. It just seems like this particular machine has one problem right after the other. So this is the third problem I've had. Plays fine. You know, 
picture is good and everything. Fast forwards. But, it's when you rewind is the problem, see? So, it's just shut off. And you can't, so you, you hit rewind, and it shuts off. So, even if you try to rewind it, you can rewind it that way but picture is very uh, the uh rewinding is super super slow and it's really bad i'm thinking that this machine just has a ton of problems and that's why the seller sent it to me but i was supposed to get the sl4 hf450 not the sl100 and I should have just contacted the seller and let them know, but it won't do any good because it would cost me more money to send it back to them, and I wouldn't get reimbursed for the shipping it back, so I would lose money. So instead of just losing money, I'll just keep it, fix it, and then sell it. But it does fine with that, you know? Fast forward, it's fine, it's normal, okay, rewind however, it is not normal. So the first thing I need to do is now that I've got the panel off the bottom is to take this uh, back off and I've already done uh, lubricating on the reels and I've also lubricated the motor and uh, it's still something wrong with it. Now I pulled the capstan out of it and cleaned the capstan. I put the capstan back in. So let's get this back out and uh, we're gonna change the... this is actually what we're gonna change right here. Okay so the old one is off and I actually broke it taking it off um, basically the, they snap into these tabs, these little plastic tabs, you snap them in and then you unplug, you gotta unplug the, the, the plug here. So this is now garbage, especially seems how it's busted. And these are new caps, but, uh, I, I could pull them out, but I've got plenty of these type of caps. So I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to throw this thing in the garbage. Okay, there we go. It's in the garbage now. So, okay. So now we're going to take our... Uh, just going to make sure my... Framework is straight. So we just set the new one into place. Because the new one... Should just snap right in. Okay, the new one is in place. So the only thing left to do here is we'll just get this stuff put together. It's very important that you test the you turn the motor because the motor if the motor is grinding in any way uh, probably because the chip is not in there straight. If this board is not in there straight, this will actually grind and that will keep the machine from working. In fact, if you turn it on and you try to use it, if this motor is grinding and you try to use it, you'll just, not only will you ruin the motor, but you'll damage coil and if the coils get damaged you've ruined the part <clears throat> so just be aware of that and be careful of that so now we're going to go ahead and put this back into place this thing just slides in sometimes it's 
pain in the ass, but you can get it on. There we go. And now we can start putting our our, uh, our reels back on. Now, what I've done when when you do a servicing, you want to do some put some contact cleaner on the switch and just move the switch back and forth like that to clean the switch you want to clean the post and re -oil, put some 3-in-1 oil on them or just some common household 3-in-1 oil and put them on each one of the posts and do the same for this post and uh, these things will go on. So the brake, you could just lift the brake up out of the way. And then this simply just slides on. So I'm going to do that. And then that's going to... See, that's in the place now. Make sure that that is fully seated into position. Make sure your brake tensioner... This is your brake. This thing is what slows the reel down. So there's a lot of uh, moving parts in these things, but just got to make sure you try to do the best you can to get them in. So as we, you could see that this thing slid down into place. So, last thing to do is to put the little cut washer back on, on there. So, let's get the cut washer. So, now the next step is to get this thing back into place. Okay, it's plugged in, and we're going to power it on. Um, so we'll know here in just a second whether or not we were successful or whether or not I know we were successful in installing the part. The thing is, is that we don't know if this Hall Effect device works or not. I think it, I think that it does work, but I don't know. So let's pull, well, let's pull the, uh, Put tape in here. First thing we're going to do is uh, we'll try play. Okay, all right, we do got play. Do we have picture search? Well, we still have that the whole effect device is doing the same thing. So it's probably circuit board related. Oh, it's trying. It might be the tape. What happens is, is sometimes the tape, what happens is if the tape sticks to itself, the machine has a hard time um, rewinding. So let me get a tape that's Get me a one that has a Sony tape. So let's just Yeah, I'm not sure what's causing the uh machine not to rewind.
It might be the drum that is actually sticking to the drum. That could be the reasoning, but this may not be anything but a parts deck. I don't know. I mean, it'll play, it just won't rewind. It's not the Hall Effect device, so it's got to be... The only other thing that I can think of that's going on with this thing is that, you know, maybe this Hall Effect device isn't working either, you know. Yeah, see? So, it's doing the same thing, and it doesn't matter what tape it is. So, we're gonna get... I'm gonna get another tape that I... Let's get... Let's get a, uh... Let's see what other tapes do I have. I can get a tape loose. Here's one. Here's a, uh, this is a high grade tape. Let's take this high grade tape. This high grade Sony tape. So let's just see if. I want to see if it's sticking to the drum. I want to know if that's what's causing it. I know that uh, some people, uh, there was a person that made a video on, uh, I think it was, uh, somebody was saying that if the tape sticks to the drum, it can cause it not to rewind. See? It wants to, it wants to rewind it, but it can't. So, what I did was replaced capacitors in the, uh, uh system control unit. So as you can see, I've replaced all of these capacitors over here. Replaced almost all the capacitors in this area. Um, which basically has gave me rewind back. Um, I'm having a couple issues with uh, some traces that were damaged with uh, broken the traces were damaged simply uh, because the old capacitors had been leaking and when the uh, caps when caps start leaking it damages uh, traces on the board and so what you have to do is uh, what's called a, uh, a bridge where you bridge the uh, you bypass the broken uh, or destroyed lead and uh, you're able to, to do it. So I had to take a couple of uh, leads, excess leads that I took off to make a bridge. Let me get back up. See if you can see okay I still gotta take oh I gotta nip that one off but this is the bridge right here that I had to make right there so I had to make a bridge on that one I had to make a um, I put some solder to connect all three of those leads uh, there were um, a lot of caps that were that are leaking 
and uh, there's probably still some adjustments that I need to do. Make some adjustments. Uh, one of them is the is the tracking control. So we're just gonna turn the tracking. I'm gonna put this thing in the center, and then I'm gonna turn the tracking until until it's perfect. So these are all the ones that I replaced. There is quite a few of them here. Tracking is now good, and uh, we can now rewind. It's fixed. It's uh, ready to go back together. <laughs> so, uh, basically all it was was uh, bad capacitors on the system control. Okay, well that's it. She's all back together. And uh, she's working great. She's rewinding, fast forwarding. Tracking is now perfect after making all the adjustments. I'm very happy with uh, the way this machine is now performing. And it's ready to go for sale up on eBay. So uh, if you want this machine, you'll have to look for it on eBay. But actually, I may not put this on eBay. I think I might just keep it and put it into my personal uh, collection and the reason why I'd want to put this in my personal collection is because these machines will play back Beta 1S and as most of you already know that most of my tapes are recorded in that Beta 1S mode so uh, Beta 1 uh, Super High Band um, was the best um, speed, the best uh, recording um, for uh, Beta, because uh, Beta 1S was, you know, um, better than the original Beta 1. Um, Beta 1S blows the doors off of uh, the original Beta 1, but... Uh, I've only got like one or two tapes that's recorded in the original Beta 1. But I'm sorry that this uh, video was so long. Um, I didn't want it to be uh, this long, but uh, I I had no choice because, you know, this thing had quite a bit of problems. It was three or four different types of, of issues, you know, with the uh, machine... Um, having you know the power supply being messed up in it the cassette basket being messed up in it um and then thinking then i thought that the uh home effect device had failed which the home effect device was not the reasoning for the failure the failure was caused by bad leaky capacitors in the system control circuitry so anyway uh see you guys later bye bye